Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today I'm going to tell you about five special blue chemicals. Now, if you hate inorganic compounds, if you don't like copper salts, don't worry, we don't have any of that today. We're not going to touch any of the filthy copper salts. It's entirely going to be mostly organic and one not organic compound today. Okay, let's get started. So the first one is trifluoronitrosomethane. And the first time I saw a picture of this, I was completely blown away and I just thought it was fake because this chemical is literally a blue gas. Now, I've never got to see this chemical personally, but I think this is one of the coolest chemicals that exists because just look at that. That makes you want to fill like an entire room with it and like wear a special suit just so you can walk through it because it's the coolest thing ever. It's like a blue neon light, except it's just the gas doing its thing. Is super, super cool, and I'd love to see someone make a video on preparing it at some point. Um, if you've ever made this and you have any pictures, please do share them in the Discord, because I would really love to see this, and I think everybody would. So the next compound is thiobenzophenone. Now, I had originally made this just to see what it looked like, but then I've actually ended up using it in some of my research, both as an undergraduate and as a PhD student. And so here you can see this is thiobenzophenone in a solution of pentane beautiful, beautiful blue color, and this is what it looked like when I tried isolating it using chromatography. Now, it's you can obviously see the separation here wasn't very good, uh, but nonetheless, I was able to get some pure stuff out and filter out loss and reagent junk from it. Now, the issue with thiobenzophenone is when you make it, it will actually just react in air to form benzophenone and elemental sulfur, and even if you do this in the absence of oxygen, if there's any UV light, it will just end up forming like dimers, polymers, etc., both of the thioketone, as well as like desulfurative polymers forming alkenes and such. So it's a very beautiful compound, but when you make it, it won't last long. Typically, you get like a passivation layer that forms on top of the compound when exposed to air, but even in the absence of air, it will eventually totally decompose. But it's a beautiful compound, and thioketones in general tend to be quite beautiful colors, and it's just very rare in general to get something this blue. So the next one is guaiazoline. And so guaiazoline is this interesting sesquiterpene. It's a natural product. It occurs in several different organisms, such as this mushroom, beautiful, beautiful looking mushroom. However, it also occurs in certain types of daisies that are ca chamomile. And so you can see here's a spatula that I have here with some of the pure compound on it. It looks almost black on its own. However, when it's in solution, you get this uh, deeper blue color. It also has some amount of solvatochromism, but it tends to still be blue regardless of which solvent it's in. So this is another really cool compound. Several other azulines are known. Azul implies that there's blue as that's what the name says. Um, and in general, they tend to be pretty interesting compounds. I had made some derivatives of this compound uh, using electrophilic aromatic substitution chemistry, and I even made a CF2H analog of this. However, it ended up being hydrolytically unstable. Now, the next compound is liquid ozone. And if you haven't seen liquid ozone before, I'd encourage you to go check out Chemical Force's YouTube channel. He has a couple different videos where he features liquid ozone. And just look at this. This is unbelievable. I had seen ozonolysis reactions, but you always just use ozone gas. I didn't even consider the possibility that you could condense liquid ozone. And so there's still a little bit of... Um, O2, liquid O2 in this ozone on the left, but on the right you can see this is a relatively pure sample of liquid ozone, and look at that. It's just beautiful. This is what protects us from harmful uh, extraterrestrial radiation. Super, super cool. Now, the next one is indigo, and so if you're like me, you wear jeans, and it's just beautiful indigo. And so Nile Red has a couple videos where he's done some chemistry with indigo as well as its derivatives, and it's just another beautiful, beautiful blue color. I think this one reminds me more of lapis lazuli, which is this interesting S3 radical. However, this doesn't even have any sulfur in it. This just has indoles. So it's a really, really cool molecule, and it's, it's just awesome to see blue chemistry in general. So if you've enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to leave a like and comment down below. It would really help out this channel if you subscribed, and I hope you have a great day.